we start with a set of propositions. And also we need uh, another proposition. Then something happens about the consequence relation. It says uh, that sigma uh, entails W if and only if sigma union not W is inconsistent. Uh, then similarly, without this negation sign, so you say sigma entails not W if and only if sigma union W is inconsistent. Okay, so that's how we had formulated it. It may not be exact words, but that's how it was. So we wanted to show the first one. Let us say. In this one part is quicker. Okay, so the part is suppose you assume sigma entails W. Fine. So that means you have a proof where W is the last line, and premises might have been used from sigma alone. Then you add to that not W, because that is a new premise now. Sigma union not W. You have already got W. Now you have got not W again. But you have used premises from sigma union not W. Since you have got both W and not W, sigma union not W is inconsistent. Right? That is easy. That follows just from our definition of proofs. Now you have to see the converse. So, conversely, what happens is we start with the converse part only. Uh, say sigma union not W is inconsistent. Suppose this happens. So, our aim is to prove that sigma entails W, that is what we want to show. Fine. It does not look how to eliminate this not W from here, because you have a proof where not W possibly has been used. If it has not been used, then sigma itself is inconsistent, that can be a simpler case. Fine. But let us take the whole case. So, once you say sigma union not W is inconsistent. It says what? Go back to your definition. There exists one proposition, say P, such that P follows and not P also follows from the same term, right? So that means we have propositions. Say we have a proposition P. P such that such that sigma union not W entails P. So that means there is a proof of sigma union not W entails P. Right? So such that there exists a proof. So call it P one of sigma union not W. Entails P, and also, also, there exists a proof say P two of sigma union not W entails not P. Okay. Now, somehow we have to eliminate this not W and get a proof of sigma enters W, W we want. That should be obvious. How do we go about it? Well, apply deduction theorem on both of them that we have already proved. By deduction theorem, uh, we have two proofs now. We have P 3, let us say correspond to this P 1, which says that sigma entails not W implies P, right? deduction theorem. So, not W is a premise, which can go to the other side with implication sign. So, this P 3 proves sigma entails not W implies P, 
similarly p4 corresponding to p2 which says sigma entails not w implies not p now axiom 3 should help so the plan is not w implies not v implies not w implies p implies w that is your a3 use that that's the end of the proof now can you see that your a3 says not w implies not v implies not w implies p implies w so serially apply mp right you have already got it so on mp you get not w implies p implies w again you have got it so you have got w easy right but you have to write it exactly that is the only problem okay so what we do we construct a proof where we take p3 we take p4 and add some more lines right so suppose p3 has m lines and p4 has n lines now construct a proof construct p as follows so 1 to m okay let's write p3 huh? so p3 begins and p3 ends now it ends with what not w implies p okay next add p4 so that goes up to m plus n so here we write say p4 begins and p4 ends and it ends with what w implies not w implies not p okay we just add the proofs next line what we do m plus n plus 1 we write axiom 3 okay next m plus n plus 2 that gives not w implies p implies w this is from line m plus n plus 1 and then you have m plus n we write the other way around right we are following an order plus 1 and mp okay next m plus n plus 3 so you want to use not w implies p so we write our comment will be m m plus n plus 2 and mp which gives w right now what happens we have to check whether sigma entails w or not we have got w now p3 it is sigma entails something so all the premises used are from sigma in p4 all the premises are used from sigma here it's an axiom nothing else is used so it is sigma entails w right so now you see that p proves sigma entails w it's only the details idea is the same okay clear now what about the second one what about second one second part of redux word of sudden so again one part should be easy there yeah which part is easy Suppose sigma entails not W, then? Then sigma union W also entails not W. By monotonicity, right? 
and you have W now. Premise. W is a premise. premise. So there is a one-line proof. So sigma union W entails W, and sigma union W entails not W. Therefore, sigma union W is inconsistent. Okay, that part is clear. So we do only the converse part. So conversely, suppose sigma union W is inconsistent. See, there is a problem. Huh? It doesn't go as it is because in A3 you have to start with not symbol. Huh? Now, if you follow the same procedure, it will say W implies not V, W implies P, not W. That can't be brought here. Because that is not axiom. Huh? Suppose you uniformly replace W by not W, you would get not not W right? implies not P. Then not not W implies P, therefore not W. It will go for not not W. Right? So what you need is from W you can get not not W. If you can do that, that is enough. Okay? That is the crucial idea. Somehow you have to do it. Right? Now, how you can say that W entails not not W? Well, apply R A 1. W entails not not W if and only if W comma not W. Right? Is that okay? No, it does not. See, first part says sigma entails W, so you are replacing with not W here. So, sigma entails not W if and only if sigma union. Hmm. There is problem again. Huh? Anyway, so what we want is we have to show somehow sigma union not not W is inconsistent. That is what it amounts to, right. So, from this, assuming that sigma union W is inconsistent, we go for proving sigma union not not W is inconsistent, fine. If you can do that, then probably it will be all right. Okay, let us try to do that. So, how to show sigma union not not W is inconsistent? It should entail some P, it should entail some not P, fine. That is what we want. Now, from this what happens? Once sigma union W is inconsistent, we have some P such that sigma union W entails P, sigma union not W, uh, sorry W entails not P for some P, some proposition P. This is what we know. Clear? Now, then we can use deduction theorem. Can you? Will that help or not? Hmm? See, our aim is to show that sigma union not not W is inconsistent. Right, this is what we want. Fine. Okay. Suppose you want deduction theorem, then this would give sigma entails W implies P, sigma entails W implies not P by deduction theorem. Okay. Then by monotonicity, you can say that sigma union not W. You want not not W, right? Not not W. Entails W implies P. Similarly, you may say sigma union not not W entails W implies not P. Okay. 
that part is clear. But how to show that it is inconsistent? From W implies P, W implies not P. Can you show it is inconsistent? Yeah. by deduction theorem you do not have not w here use monotonicity you can add a premise does not matter so you write and monotonicity so what you get is w implies p you get also w implies not p right Okay. Then how do you say that sigma union not not w is inconsistent? There is problem. Huh? Huh? Suppose you go to sigma union not not w and w. See all that you wanted is w implies not not w that you wanted. So, how do you show w implies not not w? That is ok. Then, uh, then uh, yes the you are telling sigma union Sigma union W is in concept that we know, <laughs> right? Then that is also inconsistent. Yes. Well, let's see how does it proceed. You wanted to show sigma union not not W is inconsistent, right? But you have sigma union W. So, you wanted to prove first W implies not not W, right? Is that right? So, W entails not not W. Now, how do you prove this? No, use array, you have already proved one. Huh. So, by this, what you want is W. There is the point. Ah, will not take that way. What should we do? Hmm? Can you take this? Not W. Okay. So if this is inconsistent, what will it say? It will say not not W. Intels W. And that is enough for us. We do not need this, we need this really. <laughs> Why? Because suppose you take sigma union not not w, that gives you w, right, by monotonicity, and sigma union w is inconsistent. Therefore, sigma union not not w should be inconsistent. Is it clear? Line of proof is clear or not? Hmm? Not clear? Well, you start with not W, comma not not W. This is inconsistent. How is that? Because this entails not W, this also entails not not W. One line proofs. Now, my set is this. <coughs> so, from this set, what can I conclude? Not W. Yes, that set is inconsistent. Now, once this set is inconsistent, you use array 1, this gives not not w entails w. Okay. Clear? Then sigma union not not w entails w. 
So, you have w along with sigma also to be used, all proportion is sigma are still there, right. But sigma union w is inconsistent, it gives p, it gives not p assumption. Therefore, sigma union not not w is inconsistent. Is it clear? Hmm? Last part is not clear. See, from this you get sigma union not not w entails w. Okay. This is clear. Now what happens? It does a proof. Okay. Now we'll construct a proof where sigma union not not w should be inconsistent, right? So what we'll do? First, take proof of this. Get w. After getting w. You adjoin proof of sigma union W entails P, then add the proof of sigma union W entails not P. So, that gives a proof of sigma union not not W entails P as well as not P, therefore, this is inconsistent. Is it clear? Now, can you proceed to the proof? So, where should we start? This is all right, this is all right. See, our main thing is to start with this set, not W, comma not not W. Fine. So we have to write in according to that. So we say sigma union not W, not not W is inconsistent. This is clear. Why it is inconsistent? Because from this set you get not W, from this set you also you get not not W, right. So, this is inconsistent. Once this is inconsistent by R A 1, we get sigma union not not W and tells W, right. R A 1 says you add one not to the negative conclusion bring it to the premise that will be inconsistent right you cannot delete you can add that's what it says second condition says you can also delete fine is that clear so these and these are equivalent if and only if statement so i get sigma union not not w enters w fine now look at this sigma union w enters p sigma union w entails not p. So, what do you say? If you want deduction theorem, you can still use it. Huh? If you want to use deduction theorem, you can still use it. Or as it is also, you can proceed. Okay, let us see deduction theorem, if you are taking that route. So, let us number this first, suppose this I say star. Now, from star by deduction theorem, we get sigma and tells W implies P. Okay, and sigma entails not W. W implies not P. Okay. Now call this a proof, which <coughs> proves sigma entails W implies P. Let P to be the proof, which shows sigma entails W implies not P. Similarly. We will take a proof for this sigma union not not w enters w. So, suppose P3 is our proof which shows sigma union not not w enters w. Okay. Now, you construct the proof P. How does it look? You take P1, next P2. Okay next P 3. Next what you do? No, just write P, then write not P. 
that is the end of the proof. Why? This P follows from last line of P1 and last line of P3 by M P. Last line of P1, last line of P3, they are W implies P and W from which by M P you get this P, right. And this not P follows from last line of P2 and last line of P3. Is that clear? So, that is also by M P. And this is our proof which shows sigma union not not w is inconsistent. Is it clear? Yes. So, all that we do is we have to write it exactly. Huh? Suppose it has m lines, so you write 1 to m. Suppose it has n lines, then you start with m1 plus uh, m plus 1 to m plus n. Next p3, suppose it has k lines. So, m plus n plus 1 to m plus n plus k. Now, you give in p justification as uh, m line, line m and line m plus n plus k m p. Is that okay? Then next one is m plus n, m plus n plus k m p. That is all. Is it okay? So, what do we have shown? Uh -huh. So, sigma union not not w is inconsistent. Now, by first part of array, sigma entails not w. Clear. So, once you prove these meta theorems, we get some help in not proving many other theorems. We can just show that they are provable huh, by using these meta theorems, right. So, we do not have to construct a proof now, we will say there exists a proof. Sometimes there exists becomes easier than proving it then constructing the proof fine you remember that example no we discussed in the first class you know prove that one there exists irrational numbers x and y such that x to the power y is rational huh? no okay let's see that it's nice we want to show that there exists x and y which are irrationals such that x to the power y is rational ok. So, you have to really produce something like e to the power uh, log 2 right. So, e is irrational log 2 is irrational e to the power log 2 is 2 fine, but you have to prove e is irrational and log 2 is irrational. Okay. So, I do not want to do that, I know something to be irrational say root 2, I know root 2 to be irrational, let us try that right. So, suppose you consider this number x equal to root 2 to the power root 2 right. Now, is it irrational or rational? It can be shown to be rational right, but I do not know that proof also suppose. Huh? Well, I do not know whether it is rational or irrational. If it is rational, I have got my x and y, x is root 2, y is root 2. If it is irrational, then I will take my y to be root 2, right. So, that x to the power y will be equal to root 2 to the power root 2 into root 2, which is 2, which is rational, right. So, it bases on two cases either root 2 to the power root 2 is rational or it is irrational. If it is rational we are done, if it is irrational then take the whole to the power root 2 right. So, you could prove this easily right. So, this is something existence of a proof, existence of numbers there exist yes there exist we do not know what it is 
fine. So, sometimes existence can be easier that is what we are going to do. Once you use the meta theorems, it will show that there exists a proof, it is provable, but you do not know what the proof is, probably you will be able to construct, but here it is constructible because all our proofs here of the meta theorems they are basing on constructions, it is recursive, but it is construction is there. So, they are constructible still, but we, do, we have not constructed when we prove that there exists a proof for it. Is it okay? So, it can be easier, let us see how it becomes easier. So, at least one of them you know you have already proved during this proof of R A. So, it is this. this already you have proved yes by R A 1 is it ok. This also you have proved or not that is easier still huh. ok clear. So, all that you have to do is here you show by deduction theorem this one holds if and only not not w entails w ok. Next step you go if and only f not not w not w is inconsistent which is true ok. And for this one you say this holds if and only f w entails not not w if and only if you eliminate one now w not w is inconsistent things become easier right. So, you can have a derived rule now of double negation. So, this derived rule cell that if you have not not w you can infer w if you have w you can infer not not w. So, once you prove some theorems you can go for derived rules right if it is an implication if not an implication you say it is a derived theorem. Say we do not have modus tollens in P C can we formulate modus tollens. So, what does modus tollens says you have P implies Q and not Q then infer not P ok. This is what modus tollens is fine. So, now you once you write it as a P C consequence, you will be proving the theorem P implies Q uh, not Q entails not Q. This should be provable, ok. Now, how do you say that it is provable? Well, apply redux word absurdum, eliminate that negation sign instead of adding another. Huh? So, that you have to choose which one. I have to do so that it will be all right. So, now we will say if and only if uh, P implies Q not Q P is inconsistent by R A. So, it is really two second part of redux word of Now, this should be easy how to show it is inconsistent right start with P next take p implies q. So, you get q by mode exponents which is a rule in the axiomatic system you get not q as another line because it is a premise. So, you get both q and not q therefore, it is inconsistent ok. Let us see another say contraposition how does it look it has again two parts ok. So, let us say not q implies not p you infer p implies q another is p implies q you infer not q implies not p. So, now formulate it as a consequence p c consequence it would say not q implies not p and tells p implies q that is one part second part says p implies q and tells not q implies not ok. Then how to proceed 
you have implies on the right side. So, first it says apply deduction theorem. Huh? So, one will be equivalent to proving by deduction theorem will be what? Let us write 3, huh? all odds will go. Now, this will say not q implies not p, p enters q. Okay. Hmm? And this one p implies q not q enters not p. Now, how do you prove this direct? Is it coming modus tollens? No, you need double negation again. Huh? Okay, Let us do the other way. We will put again not q implies not p, p not q inconsistent. Okay, by reduction word upside down, and here it's direct, directly modus tollens. Right, nothing to do, and this is inconsistent because modus ponens, not q, not q implies not p, therefore not p, and you get p. So it is inconsistent. Okay, things are quicker, huh? happening easily now. What about this law? Not p implies well, p implies q. Well, our heuristic is to the right of it, there are implication signs. So, use deduction theorem, right? So, by deduction theorem, this says not p and tells p implies q. That is axiom 1, that is axiom 1, then apply hypothetical syllogism because you will be in using contraposition. Yeah, that is not truth, we are just proving, we are just proving. So, if you start with axiom 1, you will be starting with not p implies not p implies not p, it is axiom. So, every axiom is by definition a theorem, right? No truth. <laughs> See, you want to construct a proof, is not it? So, how do you construct a proof? You start with the axiom not p implies not q implies not p, right? Next, what you do? Not q implies not p implies p implies q contribution, right? Next, you do? Hypothetical syllogism, not p implies p implies q. Right? So you have to use all the laws. Huh? Now what happens without using the laws? Just use the meta theorems. So this we can say if not p p enters q by deduction theorem. Look at this; it says something. It's easy, but it says something. This stage itself. It says from one inconsistent set everything follows, right? That is also called the paradox of material implication. The implication we have defined that itself says this huh. from an inconsistent thing everything follows. So, this happens here because q with not sign is inconsistent. By redux word upside down. And this is true because you have a proof not p, you have a proof p, <laughs> one line proofs, fine. So, it is inconsistent. What about this law? This is this was one of the laws, right, in semantics, clavius or something. So, how do you go about? Well, deduction theorem, huh? 
okay. So, this happens if not p implies p and tells p. Then R A, okay. Not P implies P, not P is inconsistent. Is it inconsistent? Yes. yes. You can give a proof. Modus exponents gives P. Yeah, not you have already not P. Okay. So the proof would look something like this: not P to not P implies P. Third will be P by mode exponents. Now look at first line and third line. This proves P, this proves not P. Okay. Therefore, the set of premises is inconsistent. This also looks as absurd as uh, our paradox of material implication. This was also a law, right? Pierce law, I think. So, if from x implies y you can get x, then you can really get x. Okay. So, how do we prove this? Again, you want deduction theorem. Okay. This happens if hmm. then this okay. next. Take more modus tollens. Hmm? You have to apply modus tollens. So you get x implies not of x implies y. Hmm. Then that implies x. Hmm? Not of x implies y. It will tell. So x or not x or y. <coughs> There's no or. Hmm. You don't have any R or R. Huh? You have x implies y implies x. This is the premise, right? You have not x is a premise. Then you say you get not of x implies y by modus tollens. Hmm? How? We have to use uh, contract. Uh, kind of no, no, no. Uh, All right. What about this? Hmm? It's not action fee. We have already proved it. Okay. We have already proved it. So we can use it. Now that is a theorem any P any Q, right? So not of X implies Y, that is my P here, X implies Y, Q is X. Okay. Now, from these two, I get x implies y implies x, but that is already there. x implies y implies x is already there. Yes? Yeah, but now with not x, we get x implies y. Uh -huh. So? Or no, not of x implies y. So? Uh, these are matching, so we are just trying how to proceed. Hmm? 
these three you have we are trying now this okay but this gives x implies y implies x which is already there right so that doesn't do any help but you have not x instead of this suppose i have taken not x yeah not x implies x implies something x implies y huh? I can take that. Then I can get x implies y. Then what will it give? Inconsistent, is it not? Because not of x implies y is already there. Is it clear? So what should we do here? Not x implies x implies y we will take it in that form fine. So, now we have not x we get x implies y by modus ponens and that is the end of the proof. This says I have here not of x implies y here x implies y. So, this will be inconsistent huh? is it clear. <coughs>